science. We get experimental get science. We're curious, non judgmental. So, you guys, this is um, an outdoor, more or less, natural history museum. And you can see they have, if you look around, they have a treetop adventure, which I think is the main draw for people, not for us, but for everyone else. You can see folks zip lining and doing like a canopy walk, adventure walk, which is kind of cool. Um, but they do have animals here. Their pitch on their website is they highlight Florida's native animals, both past and present. And I don't know if you can see what's going on with this, this statue here. Wild Charming looks suspiciously dinosaur shaped to me and for those of you who follow along with your geography and whatnot um paleo geography i suppose you will know that florida really doesn't have fossils until um starting around the late eocene period which is about 35 million years ago and it was still underwater so it's marine so the dinosaurs, our good old dinosaurs, hadn't been around for, you know, probably close to 30 million years at that point. And we'll, we'll be, we'd be looking for aquatic at that, at that time point. Okay, we do have snakes over here in this little area to our right. Do we want to start looking at animals or do we just want to meander for a little bit? We can start looking at animals. We'll start looking at animals. Okay. So in theory, you guys, they should only be looking at um, native species of snakes. That's what they pitch us. We'll see what they have. Florida does have a number of snakes. It only has six venomous snakes, four of which are pit vipers, actually. So let's see what we have. This is the Eastern Diamondback. That's one of our classic pit vipers. We have the Cottonmouth, also a pit viper. Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake. Yeah. Oh, this, this one is a little bit more difficult to maneuver, I'll tell you. Okay, so we have some venomous and some non-venomous. So like I said, we have two here that are both pit vipers. We have the eastern diamondback rattlesnake, the Florida cottonmouth, also known one as here. the water moccasin. Yep. There's also a pygmy rattlesnake, which is found throughout Florida. Um, coral snakes are not pit vipers. I don't, do they have any here? They don't have any. So it looks like these are the only two venomous snakes that they have here. It says nicely on the sign, venomous. And one of the things about pit vipers, they have a couple of really noticeable characteristics. One is they have those slitted eyes instead of those big round pupils. They have kind of like cat eyes a little bit. And they also have those um, arrow shaped heads like you can see with the Eastern Diamondback. If the lint decides you can get, it has a really clear division from its head to its neck. You want the camera? Just if you could just scoot up, it's lifting Here. its head up. Oh, it is? Oh, wow. Okay. We had a better shot of its head. I just wanted to show you guys its neck because it's really classic. It's on three times soon. It also um, 
a lot of rattlesnakes, but especially the Eastern Diamondback has these pretty epic, I call them eyebrows. We all know that they're not actually eyebrows, but little ridges over its eyes. Eastern Diamondbacks can get really big. These guys are big and they're athletic as heck. So diamondback snakes, these guys can get up to eight feet. It's unusual, but they can get that big. And they have a strike distance of two thirds of their body length. So you do not want to mess about. That being said, as far as venomous snakes go, you really do kind of have to hassle these guys. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't risk it anyway, but the pygmy rattlesnake is a lot sassier a lot sassier i wonder if this lady or gentleman is going to give us a little view of his neck i'd love to just show you the classic arrow shape of their head standard of most pit vipers i love snakes I think they're beautiful. The venomous ones we just need to be respectful of, but I love them. I think they're so lovely. Oh yeah, cotton mouths. Yeah. Okay, but you can kind of see their head here. Yay, that's what I wanted. Do you guys see that? You can see a really strong neck. as opposed to some of the smaller snakes where the division sort of from the skull to the neck is different. I'm going to... Okay, this is the Florida cottonmouth, aka water moccasin they can really be quite sassy as well. But that being said, you guys, snakes are really important players in the ecosystem, especially pest control. And also for those of you who are enjoy birds of prey and some of the wading birds as well, they make a regular diet of snakes. So they're an important food source, and then they're also important for keeping rodent populations down. At my mom's house, we had, I was just weed whacking along, and holy freaking moly, you guys, this huge black rat snake was just sitting there looking at me, not intimidated by me at all, just giving me some real side eye. And I was like, oh my God, I, I was startled because I just wasn't expecting him. This is a banded water snake. It is non-venomous. But in the when the water moccasin, aka the Florida cottonmouth, is younger, they can be mistaken for each other, which is problematic. They're both found near water. This is non-venomous. Either way, just be careful. Don't approach a wild snake. I think that's just a good policy. Um, Okay, we have a gray rat snake and a red rat snake, aka corn snake. I had a corn snake for a while when I was much younger. And this is the Florida pine snake that we have here. Do you guys see the difference in their head? Their head shape? It's almost like a smooth transition from their neck to their skull. I mean, not exactly, but as far as width goes, very different from pit vipers. And 
they are really active right now. It's surprising. I'm not sure what's going on. I have seen a few. It seems like it's feeding time because I've seen a few little animals that I have not alive, but I've tried to um, not catch on video as best I as best I could. I just love these guys. Anyway, all right. Oh, here's a pterodactyl. Oh my goodness, this is a neat place. This is beautiful. So there are walkways. Yeah, all the way back there, there are walkways through here. So this is one of the things I saw, you guys. So the statue, uh, the sculptures are cool. Um, T to my knowledge, there were not pterodactyls in the area. I'd just like to reiterate, but that's fine. This is cool. I think we'll just point out what's periodically. We'll point out what's native and what's non-native. There were so this is water, Lita. Ancient marine reptiles. Yeah. Oh so my gosh! Do you see the? You probably can't. There's this little row of turtles back there too. Yeah. This is. Oh yeah, I, I see it kind of marshland Hold on. part of this area dries out there's the turtles y'all i do believe there's sort of standing water in areas year round as well but it fluctuates the water level and the area flooded fluctuates so it's not just like a static lake that we maybe would think of in new england so there is a little ramp up this way that i think we can go take a peek See, there's more dinosaurs. I know. There's just not supposed to. This is not how it was pitched to me. Oh, on we're the screenshotting website. all the dinosaurs, y'all. That's perfectly fine. But I think there is a way up into this building if you wanted to go. Yeah. Oh, we're encountering some mosquitoes, chat. You guys, maybe we'll get some zoom ins of mosquitoes. There's some. Actually, you know, the most aggressive mosquitoes in Florida are actually um, invasive. They're also the ones that happen to be the biggest disease factors, of course. <laughs> Lovely, right? Yeah. I'm the, excited to see the bears today. Yeah. Do you guys know how many species of mosquito there are in Florida? Oh, in Florida, I don't know. In Florida, yeah, not worldwide. There are 12 different genre of mosquito there are approximately 90 nine zero species of mosquitoes here is this the one i saw no this is the building you were looking at oh when my. you We do have some fish. We do have some fish. I don't know. I mean, they have little informational placards here, you guys. See, this is largemouth bass, bluegill, long gear sunfish, red gear sunfish, hornmouth, spotted gar, Florida gar, all species of fish commonly found in Lake Littoral Zone. Yes, I'm just not sure that any are in that particular display oh it's an ant <gasps> is it an ant it is an ant it's two ants y'all there's gonna go ants see that in a second this is what caught my eye i hope nobody's offended this is taxidermy i'm normally not a fan of taxidermy it is taxidermy for natural history educational slash oh, scientific purposes so but here's the thing, you guys, there's one bear species native to Florida, and it is a subspecies of the American black bear, Ursus americanus. It's a subspecies. It's the Florida black bear. 
We'll talk about it. I think we're going to see one. This looks like a brown bear. And I don't just mean physically brown. I mean, this looks like a grizzly to me. It's Florida black bear. Florida black bears, American black bears can come in all different colors. I think this is a grizzly. Did you guys know that brown bears, so grizzlies are like a subcategory of the species of Arctos. Grizzlies are Arctos Arctos horribilis. It's a subspecies, sort of, whatever. Anyway, brown bear, Ursus Arctos. So Ursus Arctos is actually the widest spread bear species in the world. It's on six continents. So in America, brown bears can get their, you know, hundreds of pounds easily. They can, they're incredibly large. 800 pounds is not particularly unusual for um, a large male. But the same species found in Italy roll in an average of 200 pounds. So it's interesting. So for a while, we thought there were far, there are only eight bear species living in the world today. And for a long time, we thought there were a lot more, especially like blame the grizzly bear or you know brown bear. Blame Ursus arctos if you need to. Do you guys know what Ursus arctos means, by the way? Ursus, bear, in Latin, Arctos, bear in um, Greek. So it's bear, bear. It's the most bear of the bears. Yeah, bear, bear. Most bears only eat dead meat. I mean, they'll catch fish. But, uh... I don't think you want to play dead. That's, I think that that is contrary to good advice. Careful with those red ants, yeah. Bullet has no commentary on the scientific accuracy of those particular ants. Oh, so these ants, chat. First, we have a lot wrong with this. <laughs> we have a lot wrong with it. So... So you all note down here, there's no petiole. There's no petiole. Outrageous. Which is the connection point between right the thorax and the abdomen. Outrageous. We have no antennal segments. No antennal segments. We have no compound eyes. Oh my gosh! We I have, think they're making an effort at compound eyes. Look at the it's eyes a are smidge. textured. It's a smidge. It's an artistic effort. At least the bot, you know, the the mouth is goofy. Are red ants native to Florida? They're invasive. The Argentine red ant has... Invasive, chat. And they've taken over. Do red ants have baubles on their antennae? No. No baubles either. There's antennal segments, but there's none of those baubles. No, no, but I mean the baubles at the end, like we see here. Oh, like that? No, not like that. So? I know, we're just joking around, you guys. These are just clearly artistic, fun little sculptures for viewers' enjoyment. We're just... We're just joking around a lot. This is actually really pretty, though. Okay, we do have a tortoise, I believe. Didn't like me pointing at it. We have a little guy back here. I'm sure we'll see a placard somewhere to tell us. I have a guess as to what species we're looking at, but... I'm not as brushed up on my turtle as I probably should be. Who do we have the here? The baby gator. American alligator, you guys. On the left, we can get a nice view of his face. We have a baby American alligator. You guys, alligators are so cool. This is not unique to alligators, but the sex of an alligator is determined by the temperature of the nest. 
I believe it's if it's just a few degrees warmer, it comes out male. And so usually there's like micro differences. And so that's why you can get a variety within the nest. It's just depends on where the egg was placed. They obviously get quite a bit bigger, but they're just hanging out. Little tiny itty bitty babies. We have a box turtle here trying to hide and nap at the same time, it looks like, in the back here. Let's see, this is the Eastern King Snake. So my sister and I one year had turtles and her turtle kept laying eggs and my turtle kept eating her turtle's eggs. And she was so mad at me, Chad. And I was like, I thought she was so unreasonable. I was like, I'm not telling my turtle to do it. I don't know why you're mad at me. <laughs> We were both little kids, though. And I, I mean, I understand she was very upset. I think the eggs were probably not fertilized. I don't have reason to believe. Uh, it was just like a stray egg here and there. So we have some skulls. You know, I love looking at skulls. Oh, and we have a munchkin. So we have a recreation of an alligator skull. I'd love to get a closer look at it, but I think obviously we don't want to move it. And then we have a recreation of... Shall we continue on our way? We had a question, Lita. What oh. is that big skull there? You know, it's not labeled. Let me poke around. It is, my guess is some kind of if very large... it was the large... ground sloth, maybe. Oh, I, I wasn't going to necessarily say I was going to go cat. Uh, yeah, I think it's a cat species probably an extinct cat species, but I don't, it's not labeled anywhere and I don't obviously want to touch their display. If we find somebody, I'll ask, because I was wondering that too. There's a tiny little itty bitty newly hatched frog. Can you take Munchkin because she's yep. on an incline? Yep. Just be careful. Okay, guys, we're going to see if we cannot disturb. I don't know if we're going to be able to get close enough to identify this frog species. It's super freaked out by me being even this close, and I'm pretty far away. Do you guys see this guy? I used to fancy myself an epic frog catcher when I was little. 
I'm sorry guys, I know this is wobbly. Alright, I think he's feeling very harassed. I'll give him some space. I used to fancy my, I thought when I was younger, if the Olympics had an Olympic sport of frog catching, I thought I would definitely be representing the United States. I thought for sure that's how good of a frog catcher I thought I was. And for the record, all you do is you catch them, you measure them for the annual frog catching contest, and then you let them go, to be clear. You never keep the frog or hurt the frog. Guy there was a lizard climbing on this dinosaur that I really wanted to zoom in on, but he scuttled away. I'm sure once we get down to the beach, we will have our share of lizards, although I think some of them will be different species. There's a commentary on this one. Oh, yeah. The oil pans that are built into it because the dinosaurs, which actually Danny has said this is not correct, <laughs> but the dinos became oil, I think is the suggestion. This is much more than likely you're not driving on dinosaur fuel. I didn't know anybody said that. Yeah. Scientists once thought that it had a second brain near its tail. Well, listen, scientists over the last several hundred years have had some real crazy ideas about things. They North really? American fossil set, Colorado, Utah, Wyoming. At least they got that right. All right, here we go. We have a brontosaurus over here. Pretty brain. Yeah, well, scientists, in quotes, also used to thought that women's emotional distress didn't come from, you know, I don't know, life circumstances or societal issues or, you know, just having an opinion. But it came from uh, having a wandering uterus chat having a wandering uterus the front end of the teeth is pretty neat okay hang on let me see if i can back up i don't th see this is like just they're looking at the control arms i think they're just trying to point out they're coming from different like recycled car parts and stuff i don't think they're necessarily referring to the oil can you guys see there's a sign about fossil fuels so i'm not sure okay Do you see, whoa. do you see its little mouth? That's kind of cute. Yeah, it is. It's a very cute placement around this. This is very cute. And I like that the pterosaurs are, it's, they've had very clever placement. I think it's very engaging. Yeah, he builds his, this particular person, Jim Gary, who is the creator of all of these sculptures. Made the dino large dinosaurs from auto parts. I think that's cool. Yeah, they have some lovely lovely native plant life i've seen a few non-natives also but. all right what do we have here this guy i think it's funny the brake shoes are on the feet the triceratops frills around the head may have regulated heat from south dakota alberta colorado and montana
No dinosaurs were harmed in the making of fossil fuels. Most scientists believe that coal, petroleum, and natural gas formed from the fossilized remains of plankton, algae, ferns, and trees. The process began hundreds of million years ago, even before dinosaurs. Millions of years of exposure to extreme pressure and heat chemically changed the remains of these prehistoric organisms to fossil fuels. We are saying that fossil fuels are non-renewable simply because we're using them up much faster than they can be created. This is a very ancient creature, even compared to our classic, good old classic dinos. Paleozoic era. These guys. All right. Can we see the knot of dinosaur? Yeah. Carnivore, one of the first animals with both shearing and canine teeth. One of the largest land animals of its time. Emphasis on land animals, you guys. It was the apex predator of the Permian period. Found in Oklahoma and Texas, once again, not at all found anywhere near Florida. I hope you all are taking pictures of these, if you all don't mind, I really like. This one is, is a fun one. There's a sculpture of fossil. <laughs> That's oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you guys see this? It's a fossil. It's a sculpture of a fossil. Allosaurus, you guys. Colorado, Utah, Wyoming. You guys picking up, noticing a trend here of where most of the dinosaur fossils are found? Jurassic period. I think you'll like this sign. Will I? Stating that there are no dinosaur fossils in Florida. Oh, excellent. Here we go. See, you don't just have to take my word for it, chat. Here we go. At the time of the dinosaur, the continents of Earth had a different appearance and arrangement than we know today. Continental drift changed the world over millions of years. Why do you think that dinosaur fossils have not been found in Florida? Chat, because they were not a landmass at the time. Okay, we have another dinosaur fossil here. Or not fossil, um, sculpture. I really, uh, you guys look at this. This is adorable. I love that all of these car parts are used. I think it's very clever. Florida's barely above sea level today. Yeah. Ankylosaurus, herbivore, club tail, armor of bony plates, often with projecting spines or spikes. Alaska, Wyoming, Alberta. Some of the best, I believe the most fantastically preserved specimen of an Ankylosaurus was found in Canada. One of their, um, one of their big national museums has the specimen. There's actually a really cool talk on it that they've made public. You didn't but show even them the, the Dimetrodon. Did I not? I'm sorry. Let's go back. Even the skin has been preserved. So they were able to make some inferences about coloration. It was just really extraordinary. Here we go. Has a very charming smile, I will say. Uncle Dimetrodon.
there was another really cool lizard. Is he going to let me? No, he really doesn't. Really doesn't want me taking a peek. Really doesn't want me. Do you guys see? There we go. We got a little display. It's telling me to back the heck off, please. This is a native little guy, in case anybody's wondering. The species name has, the scientific name is eluding me right now. Day gecko. Yeah, I mean, that, that sounds right. I'm... internationally noted sculptor sculptor jim gary salvaged auto parts from junkyards to create the prehistoric creatures along this trail A plesiosaur. Depressingly enough, not a dinosaur. I learned that from not Danny. Not a dinosaur, disappointingly. Danny taught me that. I was heartbroken that day. As a child, I'd always thought it was a dinosaur. All right, this is beautiful. I pro like I appreciate you guys being here with us, but I promise you wish you were here here. I hear a couple of bird calls. I'm hoping to brush up on my bird calls because we're going to do some nature walks. And that's usually the best way to identify, like I said, Florida has a unique enough ecosystem that there's not always that much overlap with the species that I know offhand. Here we go. Okay, and so guys, this is water. We actually have a more 
to the left, we have a larger water system. I'm guessing that the wind and or small runoff current is blowing, is pulling towards us, like away from the clear water and towards this area, which is why you get a buildup of these little guys, why it looks kind of like a solid green. Is this the Everglades? I don't think Tallahassee is the Everglades. So this is what we have that's washing up. Looks like painted concrete, I know. So you guys, these trees are extraordinary. They are able to withstand being overwhelmed in water. Their root system can tolerate this without rotting, without having their osmolarity all messed up. Tallahassee is really north to the Georgia um, to the Georgia state line towards the panhandle, into the panhandle. So I don't think we're in Everglades territory. We have a little turtle, a native turtle, not part of the display turtle. And then... Y'all, this view honestly just looks like you can just step on it. <laughs> like, I know, somebody was saying it looks like painted concrete. It really does. There you go. No, you can go ahead. She's straight ahead. It's Looks like an alligator coming our way, guys. It, this area is sort of fenced off. It looks like yeah. a... Um, yeah, that's definitely like a gator. Underneath us. That was a gator. Underneath us, there is a fence. I'm guessing there, maybe this is part of their rehabilitation area. But yeah. the alligator is definitely gone yeah. now. Yeah, that's what I thought it was like, huh? <laughs> All right. We just scared him away because I called somebody a problem animal and there's also a big turtle over there oh that's so cool
That's so cool, y'all. I've never seen one in the wild just like hanging out like this. Well, I think it is still not technically in the I wild. know, but it's outside. And it is outside. It's on the, the concrete tennis court. So you guys, alligators, American alligators are diadromous as well. I know we were talking about that yesterday with the fish that were able that are able to transition between fresh water and salt water. American alligators can do that, but they can only tolerate it for small periods of time. So when we are on the island, on the gulf side of the island you do occasionally see alligators and they're only visiting they can't live there permanently they can't tolerate it they do have powerful kidneys but over time it will make them very sick so they have a striped skunk here there are two species of skunk in florida native to florida there's the striped skunk which if you're familiar with skunks in your area it's probably the same species they're pretty large, they're stinky, and they have a big white stripe down the center of them. They're kind of cat-like. They're the size of a large, large house cat. What's wrong? You have all the cheddar bunnies you could want. There's also the eastern spotted skunk, which actually they're two subspecies of those in Florida. But they look kind of the same. They're just found in different areas. So I don't think we're going to split hairs. And it sound, it, from, from the sign, if that sign is correct, it looks like they only have one skunk here anyway. I've been loving doing these IRL streams, by the way, y'all. This has been so much fun to take y'all to these different sites and talk about the science at them. Okay, the foxes should be here, I guess. They say there might be some up in the trees. Foxes in the trees? That's what they say. If you can't see a fox, look up. They often rest in the trees. Yeah, these would normally be the gray tree foxes. Well, there are definitely critters in there. Just haven't seen a fox yet. Beep, beep. Six to eight in the wild, six to 12 in captivity for the lifespan. Most active in twilight. They are monogamous, forms pair bond for mating, for raising young, lives alone except during mating season. Mates from January to March, gives birth to three to five pups. I guess there's a little house for it. And then there's also the striped skunk. Also in here? Allegedly, that's what the sign says. So the striped skunk is really interesting. A litter of striped skunks. They're called kits. Little itty bitty babies. Baby skunks, they're called kits. And they are born in litters. So usually more than one or two. And in Florida, because the winter is so short and mild, unlike in the north, the striped skunk, even though it's the same species, will have a double breeding season often. Rather than, like in New England, it's kind of a one-shot deal. So it's just the same species adapting its biology to a different climate. Okay, we have something cool over here. No luck on the foxes, y'all. Maybe alligators. 
possibly alligators, chat. This is the allig alligator exhibit, it would seem. So let's browse around. It looks new, new construction. So let's see if we can take a peek. Maybe because it was the gator cut out or something. <laughs> the, gator got, the gator cut out, you think? No, like this here. Oh, there are alligators over here, larger. Larger than the little itty bitty ones that we've seen. They are still juveniles though. I mean, I'm not saying I'd go swimming with one, but they are, they're just bigger juveniles. Oh, and we have another lizard. Oh, come back lizard, you're so lovely. Let me take a little sneak peek of you. I should probably be taking pictures of all of these guys chat so we can identify them later. Should be taking pictures with my phone. has a really distinctive stripe down its back. I'm not sure that you guys can see. Ooh, ah. That's a much better view of its proper coloration. It is also feeling generally harassed. But you can see it's used to climbing on small plants and shrubs, how dexterous its fingers are. It's able to, oh, sorry guys, it's able to walk across this like it's nothing. And I can't get this thing to focus right now, unfortunately. I see it. Um, guys, I know that one's not there. Over there. Okay, here we go. Oh, guys, it just had the cutest little run. I wish I had gotten that. Okay, here we go, you guys. These are nowhere near full grown alligators. Oh, where did they eat? Okay. Here we go. Whoop. We need a banana for scale, I know. Got a few more coming in. They're just chilling, chat. Nice camouflage, I know, yeah. Some of these animals are not meant to be released. Some of them are part of captive breeding programs. A number of them are involved at, at some stage of rehabilitation. I know the bear that they have here, and I believe also the red fox, had been, they had been wild. They were collected for rehabilitation. And then they were, oh, we have a sleeping bear. And then they were, it was determined that they were not suitable for release for um, some kind of medical, medical reason. Smarfe, aren't the one, those the ones that are at least supposedly part coyote? Yeah, that's the kind of interesting story. There's a big debate about it. Not the bear though, chat. <laughs> not the bear. This is the Florida black bear. It's a subspecies of Ursus americanus, which is just the black bear you find all over North America. They're pretty small as far as bears go. 
well, I guess compared to the grizzly bear, which is one of the other bears I think of because I'm sort of native to the United States. He's just hanging out, he or she, I don't actually know. The females get up to like, you know, 150 pounds, maybe 200 pounds if they're packing it on for the winter. The black bear, the Florida subspecies of black bear is interesting because it is actually black. Black bears, confusingly, can really be any color. Well, any color. They, can, they don't have to be black. They can be all variety. The Florida black bear, its coat is primarily black. It might have a little bit of a blaze on its chest and it might have a little bit of a brown muzzle, but it will be black mostly in, in appearance. And they don't do like full hibernation, especially in the Florida winters, which is interesting, but they still go through the process of bulking up. So during normal times, they might eat, I don't know, 5,000 calories a day, but in the winter, not in the winter, gosh, in the fall, in the run up to winter, they eat four times that. So they'll be eating 20,000 calories if they can. And that's why human stuff can, oh, sorry, chat. Human, human food sources can be really appealing. And by that, I do not mean that they are eating humans. I just mean they can be attracted to garbage cans. Bears really don't want to mess with people unless they give, unless we give them a reason. And one of those reasons is food. And once they become habituated to people, it can be really hard to relocate them because the concern will be, well, you relocate them and they will just find another community to have these interactions with. They stop being, yeah, this is um, Ursus Americanus. Americanus, for anybody who's interested, it's the American black bear but it's the Florida subspecies. So if you end up having a, really you only get problematic bears, problem animals, when humans have done something. Humans make problem bears problem animals and it depends on the state and their policy but a lot of times problem bears and problem animals unfortunately get euthanized sometimes they can be found um, like a center like this to take them in but usually they can't be relocated that was an ongoing problem when we were up at Dartmouth do they have a spectacle bear they do not have a spectacle bear here the animal exhibits they have are all animals native to Florida, either past or present. 